Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. Right, so I'm going over day 23, Waterway. So I've always had a bit of a fear of large scale water simulation. Um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with like small scale stuff, but when it comes to large scale water simulation, I had a bad experience with some white water once upon a time. And since then I haven't really tried large scale water simulation, but I did remember a lot of like my ocean spectrum stuff that I did back then for that project. So I ended up using it here for the waterway one. So. Right, so here's what we've got. Um, you can see over here that there's just these poles, um, four of these gondolas, and a walkway. And then the camera is situated right here, so you catch the edge of the walkway and the gondolas. So each one of these have some nice little bits of cloths on them. Each one is customized for this. I would suggest rather using something like tops. Um, I kind of just duplicated it over and made you know, variations. So some tips if you want cloth that looks like this, where it gathers, you know, just basically very flowy cloth. I'll show you in one of these. Okay, so most of this is just gondola work. It's building up of the geo and then um, merging it together. So you end up with a gondola. But on the side over here, I could show you. So I blast these faces over here and ray them down, right? I then transform and edit. And make some large adjustments to this because this is what I end up using as cloth. So I merge that in with another grid over here and this is like the main cloth that falls over the center. You remesh all of it so you end up with a pretty high resolution grid and a tip when you're using the remesh tool before plugging it into vellum cloth. So firstly you basically want triangles for vellum so try to get triangles and a good way to get triangles is with a remesh. However there are some issues with um, with vellum if your edge lengths aren't uniform. So what I mean by that is, as you can see, that over there is a smaller triangle than that one over there. Now, if you're using vellum cloth and you have colliders on these points, if any collider is too close to another, you'll have some issues with collisions. It will either like ignore collisions or you'll have hanging pieces where it's kind of um, stuck in space. And I was having issues with that. And what you should do is you should increase the iterations on your remesh. So if you push this up, it smooths out your, um, your triangles and gives you a more uniform edge length. And that works well for vellum. So anyways, I plug that into a vellum cloth. Now, vellum cloth 
a few things for some good looking cloth. Basically, stiffness on your stretch will pretty much remain the same almost always for like most common fabrics. Most fabrics don't have much stretch. Right, so if you're looking at denim, if you're looking at silk, cotton, all of those have um, very low stretch. Like the stretch is almost negligible. So you can usually leave that. What I do find needs to be reduced is your compression stiffness. So in this case, 0.2 worked. 0.2 won't always be the sweet spot, but just know that dropping compression stiffness is usually a good start if you're looking for that nice bendy flowy cloth. Then you go over to bend. Um, I don't know what the default on this is. Let me check. Okay, so default is 0.1. So I dropped, oh, haha, that's a, that's a trick. If you can't remember what your default value was, you can control and middle mouse on a parameter and it'll reset it to the default. Um, nice, what is this? Never seen this before. Fail to convert both arguments to Unicode, interpreting them as being unequal. So usually when you get an error like this, what you want to do is you just want to hide it away so that it can't scare anyone. So as I was saying, if you control plus middle mouse on a parameter, it resets it to the like default, the factory setting. So if you middle mouse over here, jokes on me, that is the default. Middle mouse, yeah, middle mouse over there, you can see. So control middle mouse on that, sets it back to one. So the default for bend stiffness is times 10, no, times 0.1. So I dropped it to one E minus 10. So this is 0. 10 zeros and then a one. So not point, not, 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 One. All right, that's that's how low that, that is over there. Um, and what that gives you is very nice cloth. So then you post process and I attach it at some point. So I attach it any point where it's close to the boat. So you can see it's attached over there. It's attached over there. Right, so what that allows is some points to just look like they're kind of tucked in and the rest of it to flow freely. So yeah, you let that run and you end up with some really nice looking cloth. Of course, the post process helps a lot. Um, this is just a subdivision depth of one with Catmull Clark. Extrude by a thickness of one, looks pretty good. Cool, so you do that, each piece gets a different color. And then I did that for each gondola, just making slight adjustments to color and position of the cloth in the initial simulation. The one thing that I want to show you, because there's actually not much content on this, but this is about the water. So there was a project that I worked on quite a while ago where I had to try to make a ship crashing through some waves and I needed ocean spectrum and ocean evaluate tools. And so I didn't remember all of it, but I slowly kind of worked through it and I remember how it works. So you feed it a grid, right? Here's a grid, 50 by 50, regular old grid. Then you use an ocean spectrum. Ocean spectrum, this is what controls the look of your ocean. So resolution exponent up to 11, I needed very high resolution water. The further away you are in the shot, the lower this resolution can be. Our shot is quite close to the surface, so I needed a high resolution. Then you take your grid and your ocean spectrum into an ocean evaluate. Now, as you can see, nothing's changed in the viewport. And that's because of this over here. So in the geometry, you can say to form input geometry. If you do that, you'll notice that it slightly bends this. The reason that just doesn't look like anything is because there's not enough points on here. If you had to go over to this one over here where I've subdivided, right? This one is for visualization. You can kind of see the idea, but this one over here, if you say preview grid, and then you disconnect your incoming grid, you can see the kind of detail on your ocean here, right? So this is just a grid for visualization and I would not recommend using this grid because this is a lot of geometry. And yeah, so a better way to do it is to convert this to a displacement, then use a very basic grid like this one, displace it during render time, which is much faster than generating lots and lots and lots and lots of geometry. So instead of a super high resolution grid like this, which has, I'm sure, millions of points, yeah, 4.2 million points, right? You can use a grid like this with 100 points. How you do it, is you export a displacement map from your Ocean Evaluate. So I'll show you how you do that. You plug in your grid that you want your Ocean Evaluate to run on. We can switch off this preview grid. Then you say UV attribute. So you wanted to apply a UV attribute to this grid. Then you go over to export to texture. Over here, you choose a place to save it. Save it as .exr. I was having issues saving it as .tif or .png. And what I did was I said, bake all displacements to one layer, displacement in RGB, and then I just gave it a resolution, 2048, 2048. It's a good middle ground resolution. 
that will give you an image, right? You can see over here, it outputs an image. It's like a vector. So then what you can do is you can use that image for displacement. So if you go over to your materials, you can go to your water shader. Right here, you can see it. Um, yeah, I was messing around with some stuff, but you can see over here, I have my displacement that gets fetched. It gets plugged into a displacement and that gets plugged into the displacement for the redshift material. It's a very similar workflow with Mantra. I think you just say um, like use, use displacement map or something. Then all you have to do is enable displacement on the actual node. So you can see over here, I enable tessellation and displacement. Tessellation is just like um, a render time subdivision. So your displacement looks a lot better if you increase your tessellation. So you enable tessellation, you enable displacement, and what you end up with is some really good looking water. And all you're using is a grid. So the other thing is I have this volume underneath. And this is a trick that I learned from the shelf tools, I believe. When I was messing around with Houdini a while ago, I discovered that it generates a volume under the actual surface. And what that does is it makes it look like the water's got depth. It's pretty cool. So it's actually just a big box. I'll show you, right? Just a, a big block. What you can do is you can bring in the um, slightly displaced grid. You can extrude it down and convert it to a VDB. Then you can use that VDB as a depth. And yeah, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, final render looks like this. And then if you go into the compositing side of it, um, you can actually kind of see over here, you see these little speckles, that's from the volume underneath. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but it looks like there's depth to the water. Um, it doesn't just look like a sheet of glass. So, you know, that volume trick is really cool for that. So keep that in mind. You can also see that the ocean spectrum generates some nice little waves and things. It's all pretty cool. So yeah, you can see this is actually just that grid, right? This is the grid with displacement and it looks like this. It's so cool. You just set this as a glass. You give it a bit of a color, um, like a dark blue, kind of desaturated. Then put your volume underneath. And then um, that's just a sphere area light that hits the water at an angle. So you end up with that. Post-process it so that that gets warmer. End up with some lens flare. It looks like the sun. Degrain. Then re-add grain. Scale it down. So yeah, you can see some nice little bits of cloth everywhere. The light shining through over there. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool render. And I'm, I was pretty happy with this one. I think all things considered, I executed it okay. Um, it wasn't great though. Like this isn't a winning entry and I agree with that. I don't think it should have won anything, but it's, it's not a bad entry by any means, I don't think. So yeah, that's all for day 23. Tomorrow, day 24. I'll catch you for that one. I can't remember what that one is. Well, it'll be a surprise. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.